The next company on our radar is Gokuldas Exports. They posted a good recovery in quarter three. Revenue as well did see some bit of a growth. Margins expanded sequentially. And the company also went ahead and announced another acquisition, Matrix Clothing, for around 490 crore rupees. Mr. Ganapati, the VC and MD of the company, joins us on the show. Hi, Mr. Ganapati. First of all, congratulations on a pretty good showing. I was looking at your numbers and you have grown while the industry has degrown. So you're in a difficult Thank time. You're doing pretty well. G good on Thank that. Thank you. You know, before we get to talk about the way ahead for the company on the whole, I want to ask you about Matrix Clothing. You've got it at a good valuation of around seven times EV upon a beta. How much can you scale up this business, you know, with the current investments that they've already put in? I think it's done around 590 crores approximately in terms of sales. So what is the scale up uh, options you have? And margins were a little bit lower than what you're already doing at around 11%. Uh, do you think it gets uh, to Gokul Das levels, say, in the coming year itself? So I think I think there is a at a minimum ten to fifteen percent scale up uh, possibility, uh, you know, uh, uh, at Matrix, and beyond that we will have to add capacity. They already have the ability to expand in uh, other regions like Charkhand, where they have one facility in Ranchi, and there is land available for future expansion. So so there are further expansion possibilities uh, as the company operates in those regions. So I don't see you know, scalability as a problem going forward. Uh, as far as margins are concerned, I think, uh, you know, their margins would be similar to ours. Uh, there is a scope for improvement in margins. Uh, I think, uh, you know, this year itself, they're doing better in terms of margins. So, so you know, that trajectory will be will be there, will be kept. So, so just sticking by on this point itself, the, currently the company, you know, going by what they have, they can go up to say around 650, 660 crores. And beyond that, you'll have to put in some additional investments. That's right. Right. Uh, so what are the investments you're planning on putting out there and what could be the asset turn? Uh, you know, if you put 50, 100 crores, what could be so, the asset turn on that? So the asset turn will remain at around four times. So, four times. so, you know, that, you know, for four times the investment, that's kind of norm for our industry. Uh, you know, we will try to do better than that if possible. Uh, but, you know, it's, that, it's there in a similar industry. So, so it's all similar metrics. Mm. Mr. Garbhati, hi, good morning. Uh, Prashant here, good and morning. congratulations on what looks like another great deal. Uh, Thank you. Is, uh, so, you know, a string of acquisitions, uh, how are you thinking about, uh, you know, because you got a, the last one was also a large one, right? And uh, you right. were in the process of sort of bringing all of that together. I think happened starting January. Uh, right. Now uh, there's, there's one more. Will there be more? Uh, are you seeing more opportunities, really? What's the strategy? What's the thought process? So, so see, we we are uh, quite intensely focused on you know uh, you know uh, organic growth. So, so that focus will continue organically improve the business, organically grow, and inorganic growth are all opportunistic. Uh, you know, we are open minded about it. We have a certain scale, size, uh, and and systems and process stability that we believe that we will be able to acquire companies and uh, expand. We are very choosy about which company we will work with, uh, you know, inorganically. And that's why when we look at uh, opportunities, we look at it for uh, multiple reasons. One, you know, is it adding some new customers? Two, uh, is it giving me a new geography? In the Matrix's case, uh, you know, we had an opportunity to, uh, you know, get more revenue from Europe, which Matrix focuses mm -hmm. on. Is it giving me a new uh, product category, which in this case is NITS? So if it gives multiple, uh, you know, add-on benefits to us, then we are fairly open-minded about acquisition and we will continue to be open-minded about it. We will also be uh, mindful of our ability to integrate all these acquisitions. So we won't do too many things simultaneously as well. But nevertheless, if an opportunity, a great opportunity comes our way, we will be open-minded about it. No, uh, I get that. So just a follow-on. Uh, one is, <clears throat> do you have like a, Stand, standing instruction with bankers to get you more deals? I mean, of course, uh, I'm assuming you reject most and then uh, pick what you really like. So that's one. I mean, my question is, will we see more in terms of inorganic, even though, as you uh, say, you are choosy? Uh, and second, on that uh, benefits, you uh, highlighted many. Within, I mean, so you have these bunch of companies that you're integrating. Are there significant cross-sell opportunities here? I mean, to, uh, you know, in the customer universe? 
Sure. There are cross-sell opportunities. It doesn't mm -hmm. materialize immediately, but in a year or so, it will materialize uh, because, mm -hmm. you know, there is the whole notion of uh, getting factories approved, etc. There is a long lead time or a cycle associated with it. But nevertheless, there is a significant amount of cross-sell opportunities uh, that are available. As far as acquisitions go, you know, we don't have any standing instructions for bankers, but we do get a lot of, uh, we do get into a lot of deal flows. We, uh, we get to see them. We don't pursue most of them. And, uh, you know, if something interests us, we will look at it. Okay. Well, we hope to hear from you on that front for sure. But, you know, you were talking about the fact that you have a large exposure in Europe, right, for Matrix. I think about 45% of your business comes from there. Uh, can you tell me what is, uh, or in general, I mean, the Europe as a geography is big for you. Can you tell me what is the, uh, uh, the situation on the ground in terms of exports? Are you seeing any kind of recovery there? Or is there still a problem pocket? And what kind of growth are you hoping to see? Sure. Just to clarify, for Gokuldas per se, U.S. is the biggest market. We are almost 75 to 80% exposed to U.S. from an export standpoint. And Matrix is uh, more Europe-centric, uh, far more Europe-centric than we are. So that's where the synergy comes. As far as the market conditions go, we, uh, you know, we've seen a fair amount of lull in calendar 2023. Uh, even though the retail sales in the U.S. went up by 4%, the buyers were buying a lot less. In fact, US, uh, uh, US brands bought almost 23% less in 2023. Uh, European brands bought almost uh, 14 to 16% less compared to 2020, uh, 2022, 23 over 22. So that mm. the reason for that was they were all sitting on excess inventory. Most of the excess inventory has been worked out by many of the brands. And now they are looking at uh, buying, uh, you know, getting back to normal business levels. So we are seeing reasonable amount of traction growing back for us. And over the quarters ahead, we will see that play out. Okay, all right. Uh, sir, you know, I'm just looking at the numbers. For this year, I think you're going to end more or less flattish as you all had guided earlier. Margins are showing some kind of improvement. My question to you is, in FY26, going by how things are shaping up with both these two acquisitions coming in, will the revenues of Gokuldas exports double? and margins head towards mid-teens, say around 14 to 15%. Going by what we have on the table as of now, things can change. You know, if there is something that breaks out in the global markets, then you, you can't really uh, forecast that. But as of current reckoning, do you think doubling of revenues on the base of FY24 with margins at mid-teens is doable? So, so you know, again, FY, FY24, we may show some growth over FY23. Uh, okay. Simply because Atraco will also start contributing to FY24 levels. So if I take FY23 levels and then take FY26, we may not double, but we may be nearly there. You know, we are kind of directionally going in that, uh, in, in, uh, you know, in that, in that area. So, okay. so we feel that, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, fairly strong growth uh, in 26 over 2023 will be there. Mm. And margins? And margins, margins. I, I feel that, uh, you know, we, we will, uh, you know, since there are multiple organizations and we will be integrating all of them, I think if there is a 1% improvement in margin from where we are, I'll be very happy. Uh, you know, substantial improvement, we will all attempt, but we will have to see how the market conditions are as well. All right. Uh, Shiva, uh, uh, there's a, <laughs> could you tell us what is the QIP for? Uh, fresh so, fund again, sure. Yeah. So, so you know, we we uh, we have taken a permission from uh, from the board, and we are going to the shareholders for uh, for an approval for QIP. Clearly, uh, you know, for any future uh, growth requirements, we will uh, you know explore uh, you know all all options. And that's with that in mind, we we went ahead with the approval for a QIP. We'll take a call as we go along as to how do we use it or what do we do with the you know with the QIP. Okay, all right, uh, Shiva, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Great speaking with you. Appreciate you joining right, in, thanks. and congratulations once again. Uh, hope to speak with you soon again. This much much more. I mean, you know what's happening with the US business, and uh, you know in that sense, you've been a great guide to uh, that market inventory and uh, destocking, etc. But we'll have you back soon again. Google does, it's moved up as we, even as we were speaking with the management, one and a half odd percent higher nearly on the stock. Concise.